Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how to make dry water. Now water is wet because it can wet things. But the problem with trying to dry out water is that once you dry it, you don't have any water left. But today I'm going to be showing you how to actually make water that is dry, but still water. Now this water is a liquid. A liquid means that it takes the form of its container and it has a consistent volume. Unlike a gas where it's always changing the volume, you can compress it really easily. But the water here is a liquid, so it conforms to its container, has a definite volume. Whereas this sand here, even though it may seem kind of liquid-like, we can all agree that this is a solid because it's just tiny little pieces of bigger rocks and it doesn't quite conform to its container. As you can see, I can kind of stack it up on one side of the container here. So it doesn't fully conform to the container because it's not a liquid, it's a solid. And another thing is the sand doesn't get my hand wet because it doesn't stick to me because it doesn't fill in all the tiny little crevices of my glove here. And so it doesn't get my hand wet. So the goal today is to try to make this water here more like this sand here. So the only difference between this sand and this water here is that these are tiny little molecules and these are giant granules of sand comparatively. So what if we could somehow make these tiny little droplets of water that all stay separate like these grains of sand here? And so that's what I'm going to do today is I'm gonna to try to separate this water into tiny little granules that stay separate and don't come back together. So that in the end you have sand-like particles of water which are actually more solid-like than liquid-like. So you have dry water. Okay, now have you ever tried to separate water into tiny little droplets and not have them recombine? Well, let's try it in a blender and see what happens. Okay, Blendtec, show us your magic. Okay, well, that didn't work. So you can see all my little droplets that I tried to separate, even though they were getting hit by those blades and separated into tiny little micro particles, they all just combined back together because of the surface tension of the water. It just pulled them back together. The droplets were all attracted to each other and they formed one big droplet again. So I'm gonna have to do something to try to keep those tiny little droplets separate. And in order to do that, I'm going to be using this really cool stuff called fume silica. Okay, now fume silica is really neat stuff. It has an extremely low density. It's made from quartz sand that they liquefy in an extremely hot plasma arc, and then it condenses into these tiny little nano or micro droplets. And it condenses and forms this powder, but it's a very, very fine powder. So it has an extremely low density, and also they can make it very hydrophobic. Okay, for example, let's see how much 50 milliliters of this weighs. So that's about 1.9 grams per 50 milliliters. Okay, for comparison, here's 1.9 grams of salt. <laughs> so this is the weight of salt that equals 50 milliliters worth of the fumed silica here. So you can see how much less dense the fumed silica is. Okay, so here's my water that I'm gonna turn into dry water. Put this in. Then put some of my fused silica in. Let's add a little bit more water to it. Okay, this is weird. Now here's our dry water. So weird. 
Look at this. So it feels like it should be wet, but it's not. It almost looks like whipped cream. But it's completely dry. My hands are not getting wet at all. Now here's our water. <laughs> Look at this. That is the coolest thing ever. See how it doesn't even get me wet or sticky at all? This is so weird. It's like this in between between a powder and a liquid because it has these characteristics of a powder. Like this looks like I'm playing with maybe baking powder or something, but then it also has these liquid properties. See how it kind of splashes? This is actually called dry water and it can be up to 95% water depending on how fluid like you want it. So this dry water is basically just a water air emulsion and it's actually used in industry. What they use it for is to sequester gases. So because this dry water is actually tiny little droplets of water, you can actually dissolve a lot of gas into it. And so it's a way to transport dangerous gases. So if you have explosive gases that you don't want to have in a large compressed cylinder or something, you can dissolve it into the water, into the dry water here, and it's easy to transport and it's not an explosive risk. It can actually even be used for a carbon capture method because it can easily absorb CO2 into it. And so you can capture the CO2 from the atmosphere and contain it in your dry water, which is actually a really interesting application because it can actually hold more CO2 than regular water by itself. Okay, so let's put some of this on my slide here and see what it looks like under the microscope. So you can see under the microscope now this colloidal mixture of this powder and water here. And depending on how much liquid you put in, you can get it to be more powder-like or more liquid-like, which is really cool. See how it kind of jiggles like jello? <laughs> it looks like it's just like baking powder or flour or something, but it has the mass of water. Okay, there we go. So 28 grams for 50 milliliters now. So it's now 15 times more dense than the powder was before. That's because it's now filled in with water. Now, if this were 100% water now, it should weigh around 50 grams. So that means it's about as half as dense as water right now. That's because the tiny little droplets of water are surrounded by this hydrophobic fumed silica and so it makes it so that there's air in between. So there's a lot of trapped air in between here that makes it a lot less dense. And I also have an exciting announcement to make. My wife and I have gathered up all of our favorite experiments from my channel, ones that we thought that you could easily do at home, and we put them in book form. So you can now purchase your very own Action Lab experiment book. It has 30 experiments in it. It's a really cool book because I feel like anybody from younger age to older age would have fun doing the experiments in the book because they're not your typical chemistry lab experiments or physics lab experiments that you've seen before. So you can purchase it at the link in my description. You can get it at Amazon or Barnes and Noble. So head over there now and check out the Action Lab experiment book. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and remember to hit the bell also. You won't be notified when my latest video is coming out unless you hit the bell now. And head over to theactionlab.com to check out the Action Lab subscription box. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.